So we have two different types of information that are coming into the cerebellum. And they're get, it's getting, the cerebellum is getting information from the arms and from the legs. That's, that's the major part. Of course, it gets the information from the trigeminal distribution too, but um, we're not gonna, we're not gonna uh, look at that at all. Uh, so there are four tracks. There are essentially, there's essentially a uh, reafference tract and an efferent copy tract for the arms and, and one of each of those for the legs. Of course, the trunk gets divided up. So it's the lower trunk goes with the legs and the upper trunk goes with the arms. So what are these tracks? Here they are. The dorsal spinal cerebellar tract, the ventral spinal cerebellar tract, the rostral spinal cerebellar tract, and then a cuneo cerebellar tract. And, and so they're not all spinal cerebellar tracts. This cuneo cerebellar tract actually comes from uh, um, a nucleus called the external or accessory cuneate nucleus, which is just lateral to the cuneate nucleus of the dorsal column nuclei. Remember, there's a nucleus cuneatus and nucleus gracilis. Just lateral to the nucleus cuneatus is external cuneate nucleus or accessory cuneate nucleus. You can call it either one. Um, and that is, that is in the medulla. So that is a bulbo cerebellar tract as opposed to a spinal cerebellar tract. But we will, we will all, everyone will always refer to these as spinal cerebellar tracts, despite the fact that this one is not. Um, okay, so what's the type of information? So uh, it's either reafferents or efferents copy, and it's either legs and, and trunk or arms uh, and upper trunk. All of this is, um, uh, is ipsilateral, and all of it goes in through the restiform body, except the one exception. And the one exception is the ventral spinal cerebellar tract, which goes in through the superior cerebellar peduncle. Not only does it not go in through the restiform body inferior cerebellar peduncle, it also crosses. So it crosses in the spinal cord and then it crosses back once it gets into the cerebellum, once it goes into the cerebellum through the superior cerebellar peduncle. Um, and so superior cerebellar peduncle lesions are gonna have a big effect because they're gonna uh, block all of the outflow towards uh, thalamus and, and cerebral cortex, all of the cerebellar modulation of say the corticospinal tract and the rubrospinal tracts. Um, and in addition, it will block this efferent copy uh, to the legs and trunk, okay? So it's gonna have an additional effect <clears throat> on legs and trunk a a as opposed to arms. Um, the source of these, uh, uh, of this input in, in the case of the cuneo cerebellar tract, it's this external cuneate nucleus. In the case of the dorsal spinal cere cerebellar tract, it, which is carrying reafferents, this, uh, the information comes in through the dorsal columns, and then instead of going all the way up to the uh, medulla, the information goes to a place in the thoracic cord called Clark's nucleus. This is essentially the only nucleus in the spinal cord. So the rest of this, it, the rest of these places are, are columns and columns of, of repeated segmental uh, regions, but Clark's nucleus is a delimited area in the thoracic cord that receives reafferents from the legs, the lower trunk, and then uh, sends that information up through the rest, restiform body into the cerebellum. What's the source of the efferent copy? Well, the source of the efferent copy it, are these um, are these little cells in the ventral horn. So this the the source of the efferent copy uh, it, are are these neurons it, the, that's contained in the spinal cerebellar tract. Are these neurons this these neurons that um, get a copy of what the motor neuron is sending out. And these are called spinal border cells. They sit on the border of the ventral horn and they send that message. Just a copy of what the motor neuron is sending out to the muscle goes to the spinal border cell, which then tells that information to the cerebellum.
The efferent copy that we get from the motor control center cells, again, and from the, all of the cerebral cortex, uh, all the areas of cerebral cortex that, that project to the cerebellum, all of that comes in through the pontine nuclei. The bulk of that is going to the lateral lobes, which is why in animals that have uh, large lateral lobes, there is a large pontine nucleus, a large basis pontus. We are one, we are one such animal. And what distinguishes uh, animals with large lobes and large um, uh, basis pontus is the ability to make finely coordinated distal mus uh, movements. OK. Um, so that's the, the, those are the tracks. The, uh, what can go wrong there? Well, obviously, there can be any kind. Of, there can be, say, a lateral medullary stroke that impacts the uh, the restiform body, and that is going to give a person ataxia. And, and there are a variety of um, strokes or lesions that can occur uh, by trauma or 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 any um, or stroke or whatever. But there are also a set of spinocerebellar ataxias that are inherited. And these are inherited uh, diseases. They're neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, they, they come on typically later in life. Uh, some of them come on earlier, but most of them come on later in life, and they are progressive. And they slowly um, <clears throat> deprive the cerebellum of its needed input. And so the cerebellum, without the input, without the reference and the inference copy, it can't do its job. It can't make this comparison between actual and intended. And these people develop a progressive ataxia. OK. In the next uh, video, we are going to look at some of the features of cerebellar modulation. <laughs>